So there's always a lot of noise when people ask the question, why don't you switch to Linux? And I've asked this question in a dedicated video actually a couple times. And we've talked about the main reasons and I've heard from a lot of people. And in the last video I did about this, two of the biggest reasons were Adobe and gaming. The biggest one was gaming. And we always hear about the Adobe folks and not being able to use Adobe products. We always hear about those two main ones, right? And then there are the more minor ones that are more technologically based because they can't, you know, they have hardware that doesn't work well with Linux or or they have no interest in learning Linux or whatever it is, right? We always hear about those things, but I think that there's actually one more thing that keeps a lot of people from actually being able to use Linux as their daily driver. And it's one that doesn't really seem obvious when you first think about it, because if you use email, you're thinking, Matt, I use email every day on Linux. What are you talking about? Email works fine on Linux. Well, that is true. You can hop into your browser and go to the web client of your favorite email service and use email that way. That's the way the vast majority of people actually do use email these days. The vast majority of normal people, I should say. But for people who use email for work, a lot of them, and I'm one of those people, use a dedicated email client. Now, for a lot of people, that is Outlook. Now, I hate Outlook with a passion, and I don't know of anyone who says, yeah, yeah, I love Outlook. I would, I can't live without it. I love it. It's the best piece of software, right? I don't know anybody who says that. Now, I know people who put up with it because it's not horrible and it does its job, but I don't know anybody who is in love with it. But a lot of people have to use it, either because of the way their email service works, they use Exchange, or some other reason, maybe their company it requires them to have Office 365 integration, Whatever it is, they have to use Outlook. And, of course, Outlook isn't actually on Linux. You can't use Outlook, the actual piece of software, on Linux, at least not very easily. So when people switch to Linux, and one of the first things they'll probably do is install an email client or go searching for an email client, they take a look and find out that email clients on Linux are kind of universally terrible. And I say this knowing that everyone's going to come in the comments and say, like, oh, Thunderbird's just fine. Or the terminal nuts out there are going to say, well, why don't you just use NeoMutt or Mutt or AENC or whatever it's called. You know, there are several terminal-based uh, email clients out there. Why don't you just use one of those? Uh, you know, I use Geary. It's perfectly fine. I use Evolution. It's fine. I use Claws or when it, one of the half a dozen other ones out there, Mailspring, you know, people are always saying, well, I use this and it's perfectly fine. But if you sit down and think about it for just half a minute, you're going to come to the conclusion that none of those that you name are really actually all that good. Now, none of them are horrible and usually they do the job just fine. But if you need exchange support, you really don't have any options on Linux. Now, there are, is one client out there that wraps Outlook.com or Outlook or something in a web wrapper or electron wrapper or something. I don't know what the name of it is, but there's that's like the one option if you want Exchange. I think you can hack Exchange into Thunderbird, and I think that they are going to support it soon if they haven't already, I suppose. I haven't really been paying attention, but I, I know that I read somewhere that they're planning on adding Exchange support, but it hasn't. I mean, Thunderbird has been the email client for decades at this point. Like Ever since it was released, it's been the email client, the one that says, well, if you if you need to use an email client, Thunderbird is the way to go. And for years, Exchange hasn't been something that it supports. So there's always been that thing. But even outside of the Exchange support and the Office 365 and the Outlook stuff, honestly, Thunderbird is such a poor piece of software that I find it hard to recommend it to anybody. I've tried like I was so excited in fact I was so excited I made a video when it was late about the redesign of Thunderbird like I made a whole video because they released Thunderbird on one day and then like weeks later nobody had it like unless you use even the like the main version which is the flat pack version still wasn't updated I made a whole video bitching about it right and, and I got a lot of shit for that video because like oh you just need to be patient man I know I know I know but it was a stupid video. It's still a stupid video, but the point was I was really excited about the Thunderbird redesign because they, they piped it up for a year and a half. And then the update came down and I actually got it and I was like, this looks exactly like the previous version of Thunderbird. Like, what the hell is going on? Like, yeah, there was a new search bar up at the bot at the top and there were some fancy new icons, but other than that, it looked exactly the same. Now, looks aren't everything. 
the biggest problem I have with Thunderbird isn't that it looks bad, it's that it's laid out weird. That it has a really poor way of triaging email because you can't see everything in the email list. And even if you change around change things around so the messages are on the bottom or on the side or wherever, you still can't see anything in the email list. Like you see the sender and the date, and that's it. Like, that's not useful if you have a whole bunch of emails that you have to go through really fast unless you know everyone who sends you email. It's annoying and not a great way of doing things. Now, again, I hear I hear that they're going to be redoing that and making it more useful. But if it's like the last update, it'll take them a year and a half and it won't be as good as we wanted it to be. I'm a little salty. Just a little salty. But I think my point is this. If you are someone who uses email and you want a native client you are kind of screwed on Linux. Now, you can settle for Thunderbird or MailSpring or Geary or Evolution or whatever. Those things are all serviceable. You can use them. I've settled on Thunderbird. I use it. I'm not happy about it. But if you look at the email clients that are available on Linux, which are numerous, all of them are better. Like, Outlook, better. I hate to say this, but it is, in fact, better than anything you can get on Linux. It just absolutely is. There are several other third-party clients that have a ton of features, a ton of customization that you can use. All of them support Exchange. They all have the ability for you to integrate a lot of services into them. And they're all just almost universally better. Now, some of them are obviously really expensive for you to choose. So, I mean, they're... The, the free in Thunderbird is a very good deal for a lot of people, and it does the basics fairly well, although I would argue with the word fairly there, I suppose. But it's fine. But if you compare it to the things that people are probably using on Windows, and they come here and they use this, it's not going to be as good for them. And something that I've struggled with since I've switched to Linux is finding a good email client. I've made a video about this in the past. Where are all the good email clients for Linux? And there's still no good answer. Like, MailSpring was the one that I had the most hope for. Like, it looks really nice. It has a lot of really cool functionality, like read receipts and the ability to do a little bit of tracking of, like, statistics and stuff like that. It has a lot of really nice things about it that it, it does fairly well. But unless you use a GTK-based desktop environment, it looks like utter garbage everywhere else. I mean, it just stands out like a sore thumb. Now... Not a big deal for everybody, but if you're like me, who cares about that kind of thing, it's a little disappointing. And on top of that, it even though it has gone open source, it still requires, or at least seems to require, a MailSpring account to actually use. And I'm not opposed to having an account with someone, but I want something for it, right? If you're going to take my email and then send me random emails when I, that I don't really want... I would like something in return, but the MailSpring account doesn't give you that. Like, I would love it if I could just sign it with my MailSpring account. It would remember all the email accounts I've ever used with MailSpring, and I wouldn't have to add them every time I use MailSpring. That'd be really freaking cool, but it doesn't do that. It does nothing as far as I can tell. So there's always that. Plus, it was proprietary for a very long time. So, I mean, I'm not one of those guys who cares whether or not something is proprietary all that much. I prefer to have open source. I, you know, I bias, I have a strong bias towards open source. But if a piece of proprietary software is better, I'll use it. Like, Vivaldi is proprietary software. I use it every day. It's a fantastic browser. You should definitely give it a try. I'm, apparently, I'm a fanboy now. But it, beside the point, right, is that I can use proprietary software. So that didn't really turn me away, but I know it turned a lot of people away. Like, if you're going to come to Linux, chances are you're probably going to try to embrace the open source lifestyle. And at, for a long time, MailSpring wasn't open source. So there was that. So email on Linux is one of those things I truly honestly do believe that does keep some people from actually joining us on the Linux side of things because the clients there are better. Now, like I said, this is a, I think it's, a, it's not the, the main reason why people don't switch to Linux. That's absolutely not true. But I think that it is a thing that people think about, especially people who are trying going to try to use Linux for their jobs, right? If, if they use, want to use Linux for their job, and they want to have email up and running, which everybody does, and they have to use a client, they're going to come here and find out that the clients on Linux aren't very good. 
which is just absolutely disappointing for them and for me too, because I've been struggling now for six years trying to find an email client that just works the way that I want it to work. And I haven't found it yet. I just haven't found it yet. And I don't think that I probably will. Uh, Thunderbird keeps teasing me with redesigns and that fails to deliver on anything that's actually any good. So uh, I'm just highly disappointed. I'm very salty about it and I needed to rant about it. So there you go. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on this, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get dozens of comments about, oh, I just, I use this email client and it's fantastic for my purposes. That's great. If you found the email client that works great for you, I am so happy for you. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have anything to say, comments in the comment section below. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can also find me on PeerTube. That link will also be in the video description. Uh, if you don't want to put up with the YouTube stuff, you can head over there to Odyssey or PeerTube and watch all of my videos there. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. You can also head on over to the store where you'll find a whole bunch of awesome merchandise, including desk pads or desk mats and hats and hoodies and shirts and all sorts of stuff. All the proceeds for that goes directly towards helping me make more Linux content. That's available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, 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 very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Again, thank you so very much. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.